On this beautiful spring weekend, we offer a warm welcome to all of the friends of Jesus who gather here today to celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. My name is Sam Wiscombe, and leading us in prayer is Father Jim Keane. We continue our Easter celebration this weekend as 126 of our children come to the Lord's table to receive Holy Communion for the first time. We extend a special welcome to our guests and the family members of these precious children. Today, as the children receive Jesus sacramentally, we also experience his true presence among us as we grow in our recognition of his presence in word, sacrament, and in one another. In today's gospel, Jesus tells us that he is the vine, we are the branches. We are reminded that in spite of our differences, we are a family of faith grafted onto the vine of Christ who unites us in love. As we begin our worship of God, let us raise our voices with the hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, found in your program. But first, let us rise to greet the risen Lord in one another. Good afternoon, everyone. We gather as a people of God and we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. Our children who are prepared for First Holy Communion, here they stand in the aisle. And if you notice, they process here up into the sanctuary space where I now stand, because they are in their lives to be united to this table of our Lord Jesus Christ. They are taking this sacrament of initiation to be a little bit closer to the life of our Lord, just as the families have done from one generation to the next. They are to be a part of this, God, this God's holy table. So we take a moment, my brothers and sisters, to think about their journey as they walk in here and how they've learned a little bit more about our Lord Jesus Christ. How they've done the sacrament of reconciliation to recognize that they do from time to time fail and they have areas with which to grow, and that we all do. And so we begin our Mass here at the beginning by asking God's grace and blessing to be upon us so that we too might be more worthy to approach this holy altar. 
Lord Jesus, you came into the world to connect us with your Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you teach us that you are the vine and we are the branches and that we find fullness of life to be connected to you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us life in every generation through this holy church, through the sacrament of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist, the families that are given to us, the life of the Spirit that is found in all parts of our community. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, constantly you accomplish the paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism, those you have invited for the celebration of first holy Eucharist, may always grow under your protective care that they may always bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barabbas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him. 
and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tessaris. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was beginning, it was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and in truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. 
And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep this commandment remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine. So neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Brothers and sisters, children, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Many years ago, when I was beginning my journey to, to think about becoming a priest, um, I went as a first experience actually to a far, far away land many, many years ago. Um, and it was uh, in Italy. Uh, I lived just outside of Rome. And, um, and I was doing that just to kind of see, you know, how I could follow the ways of the Lord. So that was my, my journey. And a lot of parts of that journey that were there. But the one that I want to talk about is we, we, we were setting up this house, this little, small little community I was a part of. Uh, for those who have followed on their journey, you've heard me talk about, you know, meeting Mother Teresa and being a part of her journey, chauffeuring around. That was all part of that one year I was uh, with uh, living in Italy in this, this, this house. And so we had this small house and it was a little bit dilapidated. It was kind of run down a little bit. And it was, um, it was outside of Rome kind of like about how far we are outside of Detroit, you know, you're starting to see the country and fields and everything like that. So you came up to it, a nice little house out in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, and as we, we went up to it, it needed a lot of work. And so we did, and we worked on it. And one of the things we did, because we're in Italy, is we, we had someone who gave us some of these little vines and we planted them around the, the front of the building to the sides. And uh, we were taking care of it. I grew up on a farm, so they said, hey, you know, brother, we're just you, you take care of the plants. It didn't do so good. <laughs> we had to bring in someone from a local uh, who knew how to take care of the vines and the plants. And, and he came in and he, and he kind of uh, put them together and he just started snipping at them with the pruning shears. And I'm thinking to myself, my goodness gracious, you're going to kill the poor things. It was kind of cutting them off. Uh, but he knew what he was doing. He was cutting off those branches that weren't helping out, and they were just sucking life out of the plant. And, and he even had like actual little twigs and stuff like that, and he grafted a couple of branches into them. 
He knew what he was doing. I wouldn't have even tried something like that. Grafting be put like a branch from one plant into this plant we were growing around the house. It was really cool. Now, I was only in there a year, and, and I saw that they were starting to grow. I was like, oh, further on down, many years ahead, if you guys as students could think maybe in the future, maybe from now when you're in elementary school to when you're in junior high school, but maybe even farther in that high school and maybe college. That'd probably be about the time frame between um, when I was there in uh, this community and when I went back and I went out of my way to go visit that house again. So I went back there many years. So you can imagine yourself way off now at the end of college. That's the span of time uh, I was away. And so I, I made my way out there, left Father Brian in Rome to amuse himself with the cathedrals and basilicas. And, and I got uh, planes, trains, and automobiles to go out to this place. And the last part is to walk uh, out to the outskirts of this village. And I, and I walked out there. And lo and behold, when I got there, the first thing that I noticed about the house was one, it was still together, which was good. But what do you think was the, the, the biggest thing that, that I noticed more than anything? What do you think was? Um, the vines. The vines. They were like huge. They had grown up and they put framework out, you know, like uh, bars and sticks and everything like that, and, and, and trellises so, so that they could uh, grow up the, the vines on the trellises. And so they were like covering, they made like little archways going into the house all along the front of it. And then, and then they even took some of them, I think they added a couple more too for this one, to make a walkway so that you walked into the house with a tunnel of vines. I couldn't believe it. I was amazed at the vines. And they, they were starting to, uh, it was the time of the year, they were starting to show the evidence that they were going to produce grapes and everything like that. So these were, were vines that were going to be a part of the life of that house. The nuns now lived in the house. The Mother Teresa nuns, uh, nuns lived in the house that I was going to visit at that point in time. And it was beautiful. I was just so amazed at how much life there was in these vines and how full and complete they had become. And, and, and that makes me think of this, this story that we hear of Jesus. When you got someone who knows what they're doing to tend the vines, there's going to be a lot of life going on. And think about it, children. You are going to be a part of the life of Jesus here at this table. I asked the children, um, uh, and they knew right away, children, uh, uh, what is he receiving? You're going to see, receive this bread and, brine, uh, uh, bread and wine, but it now becomes the what? It is now going to be, it's going to be Jesus' body and blood. They were all like uniform out there. They know that. That's being kind of connected to the body of Christ, just like those branches are connected to the vines, just like we are. And we get a life out of that. In that first reading, I think of, the, uh, of how that mas master pruner was, was grafting in, you know, he was putting in uh, these, these really healthy uh, um, branches into that new vine, you know, to kind of diversify the types of grapes that were, were going to be there. That's kind of like when God and Jesus brought Paul into the family and he made him a part of the family and the family was enriched. Because there's many ways to grow the vines. It's not just growing from a seed. Sometimes you bring others that come along the way. And that's what Paul did. You know, some of the parents and some of the people of our community have to be like good speakers and everything like that. They might be salespeople, lawyers. They might have a job where they have to do presentations. And when they do that, they have to be very good at presenting and speaking and convincing. That's exactly why God brought Paul in to be grafted in a part of the plant. And he was thriving immediately, just like those little branches that the master pruner was putting into the vines way back when I lived in Italy. And that's, and that's our life of our church. That's us. We're in Easter season. We're an Easter people. We've still got the Easter candle right there. We had uh, a bunch of people who got into the waters of this font, adults who brought their gifts and were grafted into the community and made one into this beautiful, thriving uh, plant that we have of the vine and the branches. And that's what you guys do. You bring your gifts in too. Your attention that you're giving, even as you guys are staying right here, no one's fallen asleep yet. So we're working on it. But, uh, uh, but, the, but the Easter time, we, it, it brings us to life. It reminds us that the, the vine and the life and the, and the church is fully alive. Even uh, as I hear the psalm, Psalm 22, was one of the first things I looked at when I looked at the book. I'm Psalm 22. 
And some of you guys know where Psalm 22 shows up. That's a good Friday psalm. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? But we didn't use that line. Even Psalm 22 is like transformed as we move into the Easter season. Psalm 22, which has some of the heaviest verses that you will find in all of the book of Psalms, also has some of the most beautiful verses. It's kind of like our church, our families. They're challenged in the difficult times so that we can accent and reveal the most beautiful times as well. And so here we have our students who are, are coming forth. They're going to be a part of the community. They step forward and they say, yes, I'm going to be part of this, this living body of Christ. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to ask the children to do a renewal. You guys remember what it was? I, I told you what. You have to renew your, anyone remember what it was? Your, what was your first sacrament that you guys received when you were little babies? Baptism. You, baptism. So you have to renew your baptismal promises. Am I talking about that out there? We're going to let the children do that for us today. And they're going to say, I do. I, I am going to try to be as good as I possibly can be. Reject sin. And I believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because you guys have been studying about this, right? That's how you grow in the vine. As you do these things, you, you try to grow as best you can. And so that's what we do. We do that, and that helps you get ready. And then, a little bit further, after the Eucharistic prayer, you receive the Holy Communion to be a little bit more tightly connected to our, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, we take a few moments now to pause here. And before I get to the children, though, and have them renew their baptismal promises, something again that we do in the Easter season, um, I think back to, to the parents' role that they would have had. Um, most of our children were baptized as babies, right? Uh, maybe one or two are, are, are baptized in, in the years between infancy and, and now. Um, but your parents would have all been there. And godparents, too. Uh, let's have all parents and any godparents who might be here, please stand up for just a second. The parents of these children, stand up. And any godparents, we see a little bit over the side, fulfilling your godparent role. Thank you guys for coming, the godparents as well. Because you guys, on the day of baptism, you would have had to make a pledge. A pledge to assist these parents, and parents you took on the responsibility, to raise these children according to the ways of the faith. You know, they, none of them drive, so they depend upon you to get to church. <laughs> they depend upon you to give them the teaching that they need to advance their faith, whether it be the witness of our, our godparents or that direct support of the parents. That's a responsibility that you guys took on then, and I give you a chance now to renew that sponsor, responsibility here as these children make First Holy Communion. So parents and godparents who are present, I ask you... Do you continue to receive that responsibility to raise these children in the faith, continue to teach them about our Lord Jesus Christ and the ways of, of the Ten Commandments and the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ as are found in the Gospels? Do you continue to do this? I do. Well done. Go ahead, you guys. Be seated. See how well they did, children? They didn't even have practice like we did out there. So children, stand up. Now I'm going to ask you guys to do that renewal your baptismal promises. Stand up and then move into the aisle just a step. There we go, so I can see you. All right, good. All right, you're right there. So children, uh, can I have the book that's right there? And the first question I have is, children, do you reject sin? Say no to sin, and do you promise to try to live as good as you possibly can following Jesus and all the ways of your life, do you promise to do this? Okay, nice and loud and together. Oh, that is beautiful. And now we'll do the, uh, the, the uh, rene that's the renunciation of sin part. Now this is the profession of faith. This is the part where we say yes to all the teachings of the church. Children, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, who is creator of heaven and earth? And now together, nice and loud? Okay. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Jesus, who was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Jesus, who died on Good Friday. And then how many days was he in the tomb? Three, Three days. Okay, I asked them beforehand. <laughs> Three days. And then he rose from the dead. And what was the day that he rose from the dead? Easter. Easter. They knew this before in the back of the church. They were... Totally unsync with this. Jesus, who rose from the dead on Easter and ascended into heaven and sits forever at the right hand of the Father. Children, do you believe in this Jesus Christ? I 
Well done. Children, do you believe in the Holy Spirit that keeps our church alive through all the century? The communion of saints that always gives us help and intercession to where our ancestors go when, when we all pass away from this world? Do you uh, believe in the forgiveness of sins like you guys received and reconciliation in all the sacraments of the church and of the resurrection of these, our bodies? When we will join Jesus in heaven in the fullness of his experience, do you believe all these teachings and mysteries of the church? Children, this is our faith. You have professed your belief in it here today. And you continue to do so in all the journey of your life. And we, my brothers and sisters, give thanks for the faith that we see in these children here today and that continues on in the youngest generation that we see in our midst. Let us say a great amen. amen. And let's give these kids a round of applause for their professional faith. Good job, guys. Let's all stand up, my brothers and sisters, as we take a moment to uh, present our prayers and petitions. Let us pray for the church. May your people be at peace, O God. Make your church one in love. Bless the work of Pope Francis, our bishops, our priests, and all who reach out together to spread the gospel. Bless our children who are making their first communion this weekend. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for peace in our world. May all the ends of the earth turn to you, O Lord. Bring justice to the poor, freedom to the oppressed, safety to the persecuted, and peace where there is violence and fear. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for bold discipleship. Risen Son, you have called us to follow you in your way and to make Jesus known through the words of hope and works of love. May we seek to be true friends of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for our teachers, catechists, parents, and all who mentor the young. We give you thanks, loving Jesus, for those who share faith with the children of our parish and all who are living examples of the gospel. May they know the joy of work well done. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for the sick and suffering. Be one with our brothers and sisters in pain, O Lord. Help us lift their burdens. We especially pray for June Groff and Olga uh, Denitskyuk and all who have asked for her prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us remember the dead. May our beloved live on in you, O Lord. Raise up from the earth those whose faith is known to you alone, especially the Lake Orion High School student who recently passed away, and those who have died in violent conflicts throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pray for our own personal needs in a moment of silence. Fill our newest members with the gifts of your spirit, loving God. Protect your vine here at St. Joe's. Make us one in you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Joining our voices with Catholics who across this country are preparing for the big Eucharistic revival in Indianapolis this summer. Uh, we take a moment to, to join our voices in that prayer preparation. Uh, Lord Jesus, you promise to stay with us always until the end of the age. You fulfill this promise at every Mass, whereby the mystery of your passion, death, and resurrection, you are made present to us in the Most Holy Eucharist. During these days of Eucharist revival, we beg you to pour out your mercy and healing upon your Church, especially for those who have fallen away and no longer believe. Renew in us all a fervent belief in your true presence and strengthen us in your spirit as we receive you 
body, blood, soul, and divinity. Jesus, living in the Eucharist, come live in me. Amen. Heavenly Father, receive these our prayers and petitions that we present to you through your Son, our Lord Jesus, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord our God, you are indeed holy. You are the font of source of all holiness. So we ask you to make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread. And giving you thanks and praise, Heavenly Father, Jesus broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. He took the cup, and once more giving you thanks, Heavenly Father, Jesus gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. Well, this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord God, our Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we too may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the entire world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope in Rome, and Alan Vigneron, our Archbishop here in Detroit, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. At wit, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with all the blessed angels and the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. And we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Now we rise, my brothers and sisters, we rise, children. We pray now as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O oh, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Let us offer to each other now some sign of Christ's peace. God's peace with you. Peace, peace, peace. Behold, my brothers and sisters, behold, children, behold the Lamb of God, he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should not turn to my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me eternal life in life.
Let us pray. O Lord, graciously be present to your people and lead those you have imbued with heavenly masteries that you have given to eat from this holy divine table, the body and blood of your Son, to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We have a couple of announcements here. First off, please see the voice, our bulletin, or our website for details on all school and parish events and opportunities, including a seven-week spring study titled The Search. Uh, this program tackles the key questions of every human heart. Please consider joining us for this faith-deepening journey. Registration is required so that we can plan how many people will be coming. Next Saturday, we will honor the Blessed Virgin Mary with flowers and a procession at our 430 Mass. That's this Mass. Uh, First Communion children are invited to wear their special outfits and take part in the procession of flowers to Mary at this Mass. Please sure to arrive early for the procession lineup and a few tips of how we're going to make that happen. As you remember, we have the little uh, uh, space right here in front of the baptismal plant that we will have our Blessed Mary, Virgin Mary statue right there. Uh, and then lastly, all are invited to rece uh, our reception following the Mass in Marion Hall. Please welcome our First Communion children with love and joy. And uh, with that, I want to give thanks to those who have made this program come forward. First and foremost, for our, our principal, uh, Doris Fernasiera, our DRE, uh, Sam Wiscombe, as, as they all their efforts to bring everyone together. And you could see they couldn't do it unless we have the teachers and the catechists who are the ones leading them forth and taking different roles all around the perimeter of the church to make sure our church, our children do a wonderful job. The music is always exceptional and comes right from the heart and lifts us up as well as we see uh, these, these children come forth. And the families, you know, the parents, I thank you for uh, taking on this role of forming the faith, seeing it passed on to the next generation and how beautiful that is uh, to keep the, the life of faith going on in our community. Uh, for all those who are visiting as well, thank you for coming and supporting these children and the children. Children, stand up for just a second, step out into the aisle, and let us reckon them, recognize them once again with a big round of applause. Good job, kids. I, I tell the children uh, out there and, and uh, in the classrooms when I get a chance to is, is when we're doing the prayer, I want them on the end of the pew so I can kind of see them and have them communicating, participating in this Eucharistic prayer. And they did a wonderful job. They were listening most of the time for the whole Eucharistic prayer. And, and if they weren't listening, they were taking turns either. Some were tuning out, others were locked in. So, so thank you as a group, uh, children. You did a wonderful job participating with Holy Mass today and receiving your first Holy Communion. Now let us all rise and receive God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God's blessing be upon you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.